Hey, it's me again, back with another tech video. Uh, today, I want to talk about solid state drives. Um, I wanted to do this video for a couple of reasons. Uh, first of all, if you're anything like me, you've been accruing a small army of old SSDs over the years. Uh, you know, SSDs started out pretty expensive uh, for what you got storage-wise, so I tended to buy kind of the biggest thing I could afford or wanted to spend the money on at the time, which resulted in me having a whole bunch of like, you know, 160 gigabyte, 256 gigabyte SSDs lying around. Um, and game install sizes being what they are uh, at this point, you know, your destinies, your dooms, easily clearing 100 gigabytes, you know, right, the new uh, Red Dead Redemption 2 on PC sounds like it's gonna be like 125, Call of Duty Modern Warfare at 175 with all the DLC, I mean, a 256 gig SSD on its own is all but useless for games at this point. Um, but I've got a hot tip for you that I don't feel like is as widely known uh, as it should be uh, for combining all those old drives into one nice tidy games drive uh, and maybe getting a little more use uh, out of those things instead of letting them just clutter up the drawer uh, next to your desk like they do for me or have in the past. Um, and then also, uh, I got a hold of a nice, big, fancy, new one terabyte SSD recently. Uh, SK Hynix sent over um, the one terabyte version of uh, their new gold series. Um, so I'm going to show you how to pull those old SSDs together. And I also wanted to get in there and test and see if, you know, OK, I've got this nice, big, new, fast, modern SSD. Um, what's the effect on like performance going to be if I throw that into that pool? Is it better to just stick with a single drive at that point or just mash all these new and old drives up together. I uh, did a little bit of benchmarking and uh, yeah, let's uh, walk through the steps uh, now to show you how to do that stuff and see what the results were. Okay, the feature you're looking for in Windows is called Storage Spaces. Uh, it exists at least as far back as Windows 8. Um, it may be in Windows 7 as well. I'm not 100% sure, but I mean, come on, you should be using Windows 10 at this point anyway. Um, so uh, it's pretty easy to get to. Uh, I've got an example here of uh, my old pool, just so you can kind of see what the result is going to be here. Um, I've got like I've <laughs> I've got an, a, a pretty nice high-end Intel SSD that I bought in like 2011 or something. Um, that was like a, a pretty nice fast model at the time. Uh, I've got this budget Mushkin in here that I got as part of some bundle, and I've actually got a couple of what are supposed to be external <laughs> SSDs that I uh, plugged into this. Frankenstein's Nightmare, um, but it's really nice, you know, I've got all these little drives here that I just jammed together into a one big drive that is well over a terabyte, which is, you know, plenty of space for a lot of today's big games. Um, so I'll uh, just quickly walk you through uh, how to set this up for yourself, just in case you've got a bunch of old drives lying around and want to give it a shot. Um, real easy to get to, uh, just uh, pull up the start menu and type storage spaces and it will take you right to the control panel. Um, and it's a pretty straightforward process. We'll go ahead and walk through the whole thing here, uh, just in case. Um, so you just create a new pool, uh, say yes to the administrator question. Um, and after it thinks a little bit, uh, you'll be presented with uh, any drives in your system that are eligible to be included in the pool. Uh, any unformatted drives that are attached generally will get checked and, and pulled in automatically. And then you'll also optionally be able to add any formatted drives. Uh, obviously, be super aware here, <laughs> any formatted drives you pull into your storage pool are going to get formatted uh, and you're going to lose anything on them, so make sure that you back everything up off any drives that you're going to put into your new big drive. Um, and then uh, you just kind of sit here for two or three minutes. It does take quite a while uh, while it's trying to prepare the pool, so don't freak out if it seems like it's taking too long because it, it will... And that may actually scale depending on how many drives or what size you're using. So just uh, be patient for at least two, three minutes and, and let it do its thing. Um, and then once uh, Windows successfully assembles the pool, you are presented with this also, I think, pretty straightforward uh, dialog screen. Um, you can give your new drive a label and a drive letter, and you can set what file system you want, but you should stick with NTFS, I think. Uh, I've even been seeing some recent Game Pass Windows Store games are requiring it, so uh, let's just leave that alone. Uh, the most important thing here is the resiliency that you set. Um, in a typical RAID situation, you would want some kind of redundancy here because uh, essentially if any one drive in the pool goes bad and you don't have any redundancy set up, you're going to lose everything on the whole pool, and that's 
generally a obviously a nightmare scenario for anything that you really care about. Uh, all that said, theoretically we're just using this as a big games drive, right? So you can just kind of re-download any uh, game installs that you might lose if anything goes wrong here. So um, if you are in fact going to not put anything on here that you care about, I would recommend just going with uh, simple, no resiliency. Um, because you can just re-download the games uh, afterwards. You, you should uh, be storing any actual game saves on a different drive, probably primarily your system drive. Um, so uh, again, I would recommend setting resiliency to simple. Uh, just be aware that anything that is on this pool is subject to be lost forever. Uh, so do be careful. Uh, and that's kind of it, you know, set those options uh, and hit create storage space and you're basically done. It'll mount the drive in Windows, you can get to it uh, through uh, File Explorer, you can use Steam or whatever to set it as a valid install location. Uh, and gigantic game installs, you know, no problem. It'll just split them seamlessly across all those drives as if it's just one big drive. It's pretty cool. Okay, that was my old storage pool. I got a lot of mileage out of that drive as a uh, as a games install target for a couple years. Uh, digging those old SSDs out of the drawer uh, and putting them back into use. Uh, but like I said at the top of the video, uh, I got that new drive from uh, SK Hynix recently, uh, which you know they advertise as like a, a fairly high performance SATA 3 drive, like it's nothing super out of the ordinary for that type of drive, but it's reasonably fast. They quote some uh, read-write speeds, uh, and I basically got to wondering, okay, does it make sense to put that big drive into this pool with all these old ones? Um, because you've got, you know... Some of these drives are, are much older. You know, they might be using like a, a slower type of NAND memory or like the drive controllers in them might be a bottleneck of some fashion. Basically, I just wondered like, okay, I've got this nice big fast drive and I'm really going to be compromising the performance on it by forcing it to kind of slow itself down to keep up with these others. Um, so I threw it in by itself and installed some games on there. Uh, did some benchmarks just to see how the drive did by itself. Um, and then I threw it into a pool with some of these older drives to kind of see what the impact would be on mostly game loading times uh, just to make sure that I wasn't going to lose any major performance there because obviously more storage is better than less uh, but not if it makes your load times way longer so um, let's uh, dig into some of my highly scientific benchmarks and uh, see how we came out okay so I dug up a couple of the more common storage benchmarks uh, that are floating around out there I've got crystal disk mark and also Addo's uh, disk benchmark here uh, and I ran them both on the Hynix drive by itself, and, you know, the, the uh, performance generally came back more or less in line with what they quote on the box, so uh, that's nice to see, of course. Uh, and, you know, a terabyte is, is really nothing to sniff at uh, by itself in terms of fitting a, a good number of games on there, although, again, if you were going to, say, install Red Dead Redemption 2 eight times or so, <laughs> that's about all you'd have room for, so maybe a terabyte is not as big as it sounds anymore in practice. Um, anyway, the, good to know just as a baseline that the Hynix lives up to, uh, uh, the speeds that they are quoting. Okay, moving on, I've, uh, then applied the same benchmarks to, uh, the pool, which is the, uh, the new Hynix drive and the old Intel and, uh, Mushkin ones, uh, in a storage space configuration. Um, looking at the, the crystal disk marked numbers, they're not terribly surprising. There's a little bit of a reduction in the read speed, uh, based on, you know, what file size you're reading. Uh, quite a bit bigger reduction in the write speed, assuming this stuff can all be trusted. Uh, but write speed, really not a big deal for our purposes because you're going to be bottlenecked by the speed of your internet connection unless you're some lunatic with a 10 gigabit connection through some kind of insane fiber or whatever. Um, but typically, you're even, even these write speeds are going to ex exceed dramatically anything you can get from residential internet. Uh, so not a big deal there. Um... But then moving on to the Addo benchmark, I mean, moving up into larger file sizes, you can see the numbers are wildly high, higher uh, than the Hynix. Uh, I don't know 100% if these numbers can actually be trusted or not. I don't know if the, you know, the underlying testing methodology of the, of the Addo application actually knows what to do with uh, a, a storage space uh, of this style. I, you know, you do get faster sequential reads than, than random reads, so it, I guess it is possible that... Uh, these numbers are valid, um, but I'm, you know, no storage expert here. So like, I'm going to say <laughs> these are maybe trustworthy. Uh, anyway, whatever, like synthetic benchmarks are what they are, but I figured like, Hey, what better way to actually see if, if, uh, my cockmammy idea, you know, is, is really, uh, valid and useful 
uh, than to actually load some games off of this stuff and just, you know, measure the actual speed of the loading times on a handful of popular games. So uh, let's uh, check out some of the stuff I did there and see what the real world performance of this stuff looks like. Okay, I tried out a handful of uh, modern games, both just off of the Hynix here and then off of the same pool that I benchmarked a second ago. Uh, I've got uh, Control, perhaps you've heard of it, Doom, uh, Resident Evil 2, uh, and Sekiro. I also tried some Mortal Kombat 11, but I have other reasons to think that maybe those benchmarks are not uh, super trustworthy, so I kind of cut those out, but... Uh, I feel like those four games are, uh, you know, a pretty good cross-section of different engines and different styles of games. Um, so, uh, and I uh, I recorded all this stuff through OBS and then pulled it all into Adobe Premiere and uh, just kind of frame by frame um, isolated the loading times to pretty much get, like, down to the millisecond. Pretty accurate times, I'd hope. <laughs> if you have any bones to pick with my... Uh, testing methodology, please let me know. But uh, anyway, that's uh, that's how I uh, measured that stuff. Um, and I, I think the results are pretty clear, honestly. Uh, control on the Hynix came in at about 8.8 .8 seconds. Uh, that's the only game on here that actually loaded just a tad faster uh, from the storage pool. I mean, barely, you know, 8.65 seconds off of the pool. Uh, everything else loaded just a tad faster off of the, the sing single Hynix drive. Um, I played uh, two different arcade maps from Doom. I tried the Foundry map, 10.7 uh, seconds, 11.1-ish uh, from the pool, 11.4 on Kadinger Sanctum, 11.5 from the pool. You know, hardly uh, a difference to uh, be upset about. Resident Evil 2, pretty similar, also 5.5 versus 5.76, uh, and Sekiro. Uh, 6.35 seconds versus 7.2. These were all the exact same save files. I made hard saves for all this stuff. Tried to replicate all conditions as uh, uh, as precisely as I could across uh, both scenarios. And yeah, I'm totally satisfied that, you know, throwing these, gosh, I would say these other drives in this pool are between like five and eight years old. They are by no means current or uh, even top of the line from when they were new. Um, but I've, you know, Turn them into the mix with this nice new drive, and like I'm, I'm perfectly happy to uh, get the uh, extra space over the tiny, tiny, tiny little bit of extra speed that you're going to get uh, sticking with single drive. Um, but again, even before I got this new Hynix in the mix, just these older drives that I had, kind of this ramshackle <laughs> contraption of uh, SSDs using up every SATA port on my motherboard, uh, still like performance was fine. Like I had no complaints, and it was a nice way to not have to buy. A big new SSD if you've got old ones lying around or if you, even if you can find some smaller ones on super cheap discount or something and uh, lash them together that way. That's definitely a, a valid approach too. So yeah, hopefully, you know, I, I feel like uh, storage spaces is just not a super well-known feature in Windows. I've even seen very recently, like as recently as yesterday on a forum, somebody complaining about like, oh, I'm having to pick which SSD to install a game to because they're so big now that you can't fit that many on one drive. Um, so this is kind of a way to solve that problem, you know, just, uh, uh, kind of jam all these things together, make one big, nice games install drive and download to your heart's content. Uh, so yeah, uh, hopefully this has been useful for some people and educational and so forth. Uh, if it did help you or that you enjoyed this in any way, you know, it's nice to hear feedback. If there's anything you think I could have done better, that's nice to hear too. So, uh, yeah, love to hear what you think about this or if you've got any other ideas for other stuff you would like to see in the future. Uh, yeah, and thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.